communication is necessary in um, a business because it helps businesses to achieve their goals and objectives more effectively. It helps to build strong relationships with customers, attract and retain top talent, improve employee morale and productivity, develop and implement new strategies, solve problems, and make better decisions while staying ahead of the competition. Strong communication skills are essential to, um, for businesses to be profitable and have a good reputation and employees who can communicate effectively and understand the company's goals are essential to business success. So today we are asking, how can effective communication benefit businesses and their employees? So please let's hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation, send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 0818-038-4663. So communication. Mm. So as we were saying, right, communication in itself and the effectiveness of it um, stems with you essentially being able to um, craft your message in a way um, and understand your audience in a way that they can then take that communication um, and really understand the message that you're passing across. So, I mean, today we're focusing on businesses, right, and business communications and um, what we think are... Um, effective strategies for being able to communicate. So you were talking earlier about your work as in customer success. Um, how do you use communication effectively in your day-to-day -day, um, work life today for your business? Uh, so for, for me, right, typically I make sure that our value proposition is clear. Mm -hmm. Starting with that, um, we want or I want my customers to look at our value proposition and know exactly what the brand or the company is about. Mm. And that would also translate into the kind of products that we are selling to them and our services as well. Um, we make sure that, um, that whatever it is that is going on with them, it aligns with us, okay. right? They have their business model, we have ours. They have their value proposition, we have ours. Mm. But when we know that we have a problem that we can solve, you have a problem, we can solve it. And that's where the value comes in. And that's what we communicate. Now, when, the, when my customer sees that, okay, you know what? Yeah, your value aligns with mine. I see the vision. I get the mission statement. Then we want to come on board. Mm -hmm. Now, once they come on board, it doesn't stop. It doesn't stop there, right? Communication continues. It's like an end-to-end -end process from when sales brings them on board and they are passed on to customer success or even to the product team, right? Communication just goes on through because once you won the deal, the customer is oh. working with you now. Then when you have issues, that's another level of communication. Yeah. Being able to effectively and timely resolve those problems, yeah. giving your customer feedback at each time, depending on the level of resolution that you're working with at that time. So, I, I mean, I, I like the direction that you've taken it. So, you're looking at the external communication for um, an organization so yeah. in how you talk to your customers. And you also mentioned vision and mission. And I think that's very important because organizations first have to attract customers, mm. which means to attract customers, you need to essentially not only tell customers what you sell, but have customers understand who you are. Right, so whether it's B two B, you know, you're selling to other businesses, or it's B two C, you're selling direct to the consumers. People still need to know about you. They still need to trust. So today, trust is a big thing. Yeah. So you see people, you know, all the companies who are out there on social media today, they're not just trying to sell a product, but they're trying to get customers to connect with their brand. You know, they're trying to communicate the essence of who they are, what their story is. Storytelling has become um, a huge concept now because these platforms exist. For people to tell their stories. So when we when we say vision and mission, I'm communicating who I am, what I'm doing, what my long term, term goals goal, are, yeah. right? And then I'm saying to my customers, this is who I am. This is what I believe in. Do we have the same? So do I practice ethically? And is that something that is important for you, as a customer, to find a, a company whose ethics and principles match yours and maybe that of your own business to work with? So. In that sense, it sets the tone of first defining who we are as a business, what, you know, as an organization. And then as you go into that, you're now crafting the messaging. So this is what customers, before they even become customers, this is what they find out about our brand. Yeah. So like you said, even in communicating, it's not just about what you've written. It's also making sure that your salespeople understand what they're supposed to tell 
customers, customers right? Yeah, yeah. Because I'm sure for you, from a customer success perspective, you're thinking, if my salespeople have made the wrong promises to customers, <laughs> I'm sure that's your day-to-day -day life, right? <laughs> you know, then how, how are customers supposed to have success with your product? So even that communication at the sales stage is also, and this is usually most times now one-on-one -on -one interactions, salespeople to customers, that sales process is also hinged on mm. clear communication. Have I clearly understood your problem? Do I have a solution that matches your need? And then can I you know, bring you on board? And then all the promises I've made at that point, the product will fly. It will make you, <laughs> it will make you rich. It will, you will have no hassles again for all of those things that I have communicated. I need to make sure that, that I can back up those promises, right? Yeah. Um, and that's where we come in. So we start to build on that external customer content. And then they become customers. And then you see, you know, the communications trying to continue that sort of trail when they become customers. So all the happy New Year's, happy birthday, Merry Christmas, it's all organizations still trying to communicate, communicate you know, yeah. effectively with customers. I think today, if you look in your mailbox, how many emails have you gotten from mm -hmm. different... <laughs> I'm going to from, use letters. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's trying to tell you something um, or the other. How do you then, um, let's, let's speak now from the perspective of a customer, right? When you get all those emails and newsletters and all, what is it about a particular one and the communication that then makes you open it in the midst of everything that you have? I think there's some specific... Um brands or companies that I always look out for and that's because of how impeccable their services are okay. right history has just shown me that oh you've been very great at what you do mm -hmm. and even when you have downtimes the way you um, respond mm -hmm. to your customers in that moment yeah. right is what matters to me because no business is perfect. You're always going to have issues. You're always going to put out fires. But how you put out those fires and how you communicate with your customers matter a lot. So brands like that, when their emails come in or there is an update, I'm interested. Mm. Because, oh, what new thing have you built, right? And brands that I know are very innovative. Mm -hmm. They are always looking for better ways to make their customers happy. They are looking for better ways to improve on the value that they're giving out. Yeah. So in situations like that, when I see it, I just rush, okay, what's happening? What's happening? Yeah. Sometimes it might not be that they have any new product update. It could be that they've um, partnered with a new company it's or yeah, yeah, or they've changed a, a strategy that they were um, probably previously working on or they've had more people on the team or something has changed. Maybe they have a new feature, for example. Mm -hmm. So things like that, I'm very interested. Even if they yeah. decide to tell me, oh, you know what, this month all we did was enjoy with our employees mm. oh, okay that's nice you enjoy it very yeah, good yeah. so i know that you're giving me um updates mm -hmm. on what's happening in the company right and aside that it, i mean it's just amazing when i see people who are doing what they're supposed to do okay. i you're collecting my money so. <laughs> so so you are so you are very proper and you are interested because i find that a lot of people get lots and lots of messaging so it's almost a fine balance for me to always say I want to send a message that makes me get this reaction that says, oh, I want to read the next one. And I find that for me, the things that I try to focus on, one is most of the emails that I, I, I read and I think are memorable, there's always something about the tone of voice the messaging uses, mm. right? Even though it's quirky or it's funny, they're just taking a, a different approach to please be informed. Don't yeah. want to notify you. You know, <laughs> it's it's not the conventional type of, of communication, right? That I think for me is the first thing that stands out. Um, the consistency of the communication, again, getting that balance right where it's not too much. I'm not getting 20 emails from you, you know, in one week. Yeah. So balancing the the number of communications that you get. Then I also then want to look at what content you are sending me. Is it relevant to me? Mm. So sometimes I say, are you paying attention to what you're sending me? Is it just marketing after marketing, byproduct A, byproduct B, byproduct C, right? I feel like I want you to use the information you know about me to send me things that are relevant. So personalization is a huge thing today um, in communication for businesses. Yeah. People don't just want dear ma or dear sir. Mm. They want you know, to use their name. They want you to, to show them in their communication that you know who they are yeah. as, as, as their customer. 
that it's not just a general, we're pushing this to everybody. So I think things like that, and technology has helped us in this day and age be able to communicate to a lot of people um, without actually, or efficiently communicate to these people um, and be able to deliver a message in a way that they can connect to it. Yeah. So I think summarizing that, that sort of strategies that we can, we can speak to when we say, how do you communicate effectively to, to your customers. Um, external customers? Yeah. Um, I think that we can before we go into looking at internal. Thank you for staying with us. If you just tuned in, we are discussing effective communication for business growth. Please let's hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 0818-038-4663. So in fact, when I was just read, like, you know, saying business growth, yeah. I think that that in itself can sometimes be part of your messaging. Because growth can mean different things mm -hmm. for different businesses. It can be that I'm trying to scale up in the number of customers that I have. It might be that I'm trying to scale up in my, my product portfolio and my offering, maybe adding more features to my product. So I think even carrying customers along in your journey, yeah. right, in what we're doing. Like you said, I want to know that, you know, employees had a great time hanging out this month. I want to know what's happening. So even being able to keep companies um, going in terms of, um, your activities can also be another strategy for people to connect um, with your business. But to serve the external customer, you have a lot of internal, <laughs> internal customers, yeah. right? Yeah. And when you even started talking about vision and mission, there is a communication aspect of that, mm -hmm. of communicating, the, because the vision and mission typically comes from maybe a founder or a CEO, she, yeah. you know, MD, and the people who work with you to bring that vision to life need to understand it. What's been your experience with you know, the organizations you've worked with? Have they been able to communicate their vision and mission effectively to you as an employee to then be able to connect and, and deliver? What are your experiences? Hmm. So I, I, I think, well, I wouldn't call names. <laughs> <laughs> um, with the different companies that I've worked with, mm. right, there was a particular one where there was no clear vision. Mm. There was no clear mission. Um, even the culture was dead. Um, yeah. I get that it was a startup, but um, there were lots of things that were missing, right? In the sense that when we are trying to um, sell to our customers, we didn't even understand what our vision was or mm. the mission. All we knew was just go and sell. Right. In, in, in situations like that, even when we come back and we get feedback based on what we've gotten from outside, it just isn't received properly. Oh. Right. So internally, we had a lot of us who were grumbling, a lot of us who were upset, who just felt like we were wasting our time yeah. while we were there. And you would see people who just wanted to exit the company because, I mean, this is not even aligning with my own with future my plan, own, right? Yeah, absolutely. So in, in situations like that, it's just like, you know what, forget about it. But there are companies that I've worked with where culture is clear, vision is clear, mission is clear, everything is clear. So you know why you're there, right? There are clear roles and responsibilities. And even when you have feedback, it's being taken seriously, Right, and one thing about internal communication that I know is that it, it, it builds teamwork and collaboration. Right, you have um, employees who communicate effectively with each other. Again, listening is also very important because top management has to properly listen to what the staffs or the employees mm -hmm. are saying. Now, if you have employees who are disgruntled, it's going to affect the general flow of work. Because mm -hmm. I've had situations where a particular colleague wasn't happy anymore, right? I tried my best because we work together. Mm. So I need you to be at your best. There's so much I can do as your colleague. Management has to step in at this point. Now, if that doesn't happen, my work suffers. Because if you're not your best, I can't deliver, Absolutely. right? So it's like I'm going to be pulling my weight, doing what I need to do, and also do your work mm. as well. So I've had those, I've had those instances well, sometimes, I mean, even when everything is clear, things are going smoothly, you still have hiccups along the way. And that's where management needs to step in. Management needs to just make sure that communication from one employee to another is, 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 is seamless, mm. right? I know that there are times when I've had conflicts with some of my colleagues. Like, 
management will probably have to step in or I have to just be the bigger person and say, okay, you know what? Let's resolve this. Mm -hmm. Where did I mess up? Where did you mess up? How can we fix this? And how do we prevent this in the future? But yeah. Mm. Very, very lots of um, important things that you have mentioned there. Um, every time I hear the word culture, everybody that knows me knows that I'm, I'm a culture champion. I think that culture is um, foundational. I think, what's that quote? I think that says culture eats strategy for breakfast or something like that. Mm. If your culture isn't right, which means that I haven't, in interpreting or translating the vision and the mission, I haven't defined it properly, I haven't communicated it clearly, yeah. so people can buy into it. It can affect the overall performance of a company, and then it starts to even affect other communications within the company, because when I'm frustrated and I'm angry, when you say hello to me, I'm, I'm ready for mm -hmm. war, right? <laughs> um, or I'm just not pulling my weight, as we said. So lots of uh, important points that you made. Um, in, in that um, submission. I think that when I, when I think about internal communication, I think one of the most important things for me is even about teaching employees in an organization how to communicate. Yeah. Uh, we've, we've gone from the, the place where organizations are, are focused on experience and focused on capacity. I mean, these things are still important. But over time, organizations have also understood or have come to understand the impact and the power of soft skills and communication is one of those things. Mm. So even ensuring that, given that everybody is coming from different backgrounds, different levels of education, um, even though you set a standard, I mean, you're not going to hire a you know, master's degree holder, for example, to be a security guard. Yeah. So even with the level of exposure, education that, that someone who would end up being a security guard would have, you still need to make sure that that person can communicate effectively. If that person doesn't understand how to properly greet your guests, how to properly talk to other colleagues in your business, then that's going to be a problem. Yeah. So communication in itself and ensuring that staff in, a, in an organization can communicate effectively is key to productivity. Mm. Time is not lost in, ah, what you said to me was I should go and do A. Yeah. I've done A now. You're telling me, no, that's not what you meant. You wanted B, right? <laughs> You know, a lot of time is lost. It's just, there was this um, uh, meme I saw. Well, not really a meme. It was more of a graphic. I don't know if you've seen it. Where they, they showed a tree with a swing. Mm. And they were saying, all the different people in the business, how they described what they wanted to build. So they said, this is what the product owner dis um, <laughs> uh, described. Then there was a picture of what the person oh, controlling finance described. The person who actually asked for it, what the person got in the end. And like 10 different pictures, and all of them were different. Yeah. And really, what was in that was communication. communication. Yeah. All of those people were communicating, this, trying to communicate the same thing, but from their own perspective, mm. right? So having everybody understand that, I speak from my perspective because that's the experience that I have. I encode based on what I know, but I, I also need to be taking into account who I'm speaking to. So if I'm speaking to you know, the chairman of the company or the CEO of the company, I speak in a completely different way yeah. as I would speak to a janitor or um, a, a, a security guard. Yeah. Not because um, it's a class thing, but it's making sure that the message is encoded in a way that they can decode and then actually get the message that I'm trying to pass along, right? Yeah. So that in itself, the importance of communication um, in terms of making sure people can effectively do their work get the message, because nobody works a loop, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. As long as there's an organization, there's more than one person, yeah. and we need to communicate to be able to work together. So yeah. I think that's another thing that's very important, having people be skilled in being able to communicate. So businesses also have to take that as a learning and development need to build the right communication skills um, within their people. So the next thing that I think is, even in the... Do you, have you had those experiences where people are in a company and they don't know what's going on? Yes. You know, you're just like, <laughs> well, I'm just the receptionist. They, they could tell you that the company is going bankrupt tomorrow and you had no, no clue, idea. right? So what have, you, what have your experiences been with like internal communications, things that give you information about what's going on in the company? Just the way we had for the, we talked about for the external customers, yeah. right? Have you had some companies where you're just like, I come to work every day, I don't know what's going on here, but I'm here, shower. <laughs> I'll collect my salary at the end of the month. 
<laughs> you know, what is experience you know, been? Um, so there was a company that I worked with, right? It's, it's a massive company. Mm. So there are times when things are happening, you wouldn't know. Yep. So I'm in a department. I mean, you, in a department where you have about maybe seven different teams. Mm. When I'm organizing an event with my own clients, Team B isn't aware. Mm. So sometimes I might go somewhere to a venue and I realize, oh, my company is having an event here. I'm like, ah, how? No clue. And I'm seeing that it's not even a different department. It's my own department. Mm. So I'm not even aware. So I asked my other colleagues, did you know this was happening? They said, no. Mm. I'm like, what is happening? <laughs> right? <laughs> how can you? working in the same organization. I, I remember there was a time a customer called me. Oh, please. Um, I, I can't remember the address to this event that you, you guys are organizing. I said, huh? Which event? Event? Where is that happening? <laughs> I am not aware. Mm. And the, I feel like that was a very, we had a very big gap, mm. right? And those kind of things, right, at the end of the day, it affects your external business. It's, just, it's not just internal. Mm. Because now people outside or your customers can see that there are a lot of things going on within the company and not everyone is aware. Mm. So if there is chaos happening in there, how safe is our business with you? Yeah. Right? I, I, I don't think that that... Not that I don't even think. I know that it is not a good thing. Mm. Like It is important that you update everyone in the company how you decide to do it as a business is up to it's you. It's up to you what channel right? you yeah. use. But, but just sure to make it. sure that mm. people are up to date on what's happening. If there is an event, no matter how small it is, if there are changes happening, if employees are leaving, if you're getting new management, if you're changing the workflow or there is a process flow that is going to change, make sure everyone is aware from top to bottom because at the end of the day your employees are your ambassadors mm -hmm. there are people who go out and they represent your company in different shapes or forms or sizes right it, it could just even be the receptionist you feel like yeah. oh the receptionist is not a salesperson the receptionist is not a customer success person the receptionist is not even an engineer, right? But when they are outside and they are talking about your products or your services, they should be able to talk about it. Yeah. And that's one thing I, I, I love about the onboarding process, right? There are people who have onboarding process that are just very short. Mm. Oh, the mission is this, the vision is this, this is what we do. Okay, go to your department, they'll tell you <laughs> what you're supposed to do. They'll tell you what you're supposed to do. Yeah, what your role yep. is. But it is important that you know the products. Yeah. You need to understand. One thing I love about my present company is there was something that we do. Um, we do this demo every, every month. So each department will do a demo of what their product is, okay. where they are right now, the changes they've made in the past few months, in the past mm. few weeks, what it's looking like now, and how to use that platform. Mm. So I know that some people have like short attention span, but they will catch you at the end of that demo because questions will be asked. Yeah. So what does this product do, right? What were the changes that were made? Now, in situations like that, you don't necessarily know, you don't necessarily need to know how to use the product end to end, but you have an idea, mm. right? So if I go out today and I find someone who I feel is asking me questions about an aspect of the business, I might not be managing that aspect, but I can you've give... Got a, you've yeah. got some information. Yeah, exactly. Absolutely. So I can give you insight. Mm. And then I'll probably just tell you, oh, I can connect I can you, back to, to, you the right I can person, connect to the right person. Right? In situations, very... Like, it helps the business end to end. But I feel like people don't do that. A lot of, a, a lot of um, companies play with onboarding. Mm. And that's why you have people who join the team. And even sometimes in your own team, they don't know what's happening. Mm. So I have to start tutoring you all over again. Mm -hmm. In fact, I start an entirely new onboarding process, mm -hmm. right? And then there's something called a playbook. Departments should have a playbook, mm -hmm. something that new employees can always fall back on, look at. Even, even um, employees who have been in the company for a very long time can still always go back to the playbook and look mm -hmm. at it in case you feel like, oh, you know what? I've had some shortcomings. Maybe I'm missing mm -hmm. something. Maybe mm -hmm. I've forgotten something in the flow. Mm -hmm. There's always something to refer back to. A playbook yeah. is like a manual, basically, for, mm -hmm. for uh, <laughs> uh <laughs> Yep, yep, that's the book where all the strategies go. <laughs> it's like a manual, mm. right? And one thing is, it is important for businesses to communicate what their short-term and long-term goal mm. is. Make it clear 
and concise. There are people who you've told them, okay, this is your role. I know what my role is. My role is what product manager. Oh, my role is senior engineer. But what are your day-to-day -day responsibilities? Mm. What are you supposed to deliver on, right? Now, if I don't have clear goals, it means that I might end up doing everything and nothing. Yeah. So it's like I'm here, I'm doing the ABC, just scattering my tentacles everywhere. But at the end of the month, when we are looking at the key results or your goals for that month, we yeah. see that you've not achieved anything. And sometimes you feel like it's on the employee. It's not on the employee. Mm -hmm. It's a different thing if you've communicated effectively what they are supposed to be doing and then they end up not doing it. But in a situation where you don't communicate that to that employee, then it falls on the company, mm -hmm. right? It falls on management. That means you've missed a key step. And those are the things that I feel companies need to start correcting. Yeah, absolutely. Um, in fact, when you were talking, I remembered an uh, experience that I had. I went to an event and you know how you introduce yourself. Oh, I'm this so-and-so. I work for this company. And the person said, oh, yes, um, I know you're a new MD. I was like, the <laughs> MD. So in my mind, I'm like, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Oh, okay, what's, what's his name again? Ah, yes, you're so right. You know, I'm so used to the old MD. Like, you, I literally had to wing my way through the conversation. And I was wow. thinking to myself, how do you change an MD? And mm. you haven't, the organization is not the first people, like, internally, we're not the first people to hear that, you know, we have an, a, a new MD. So that was uh, an interesting experience. I just thought to myself, communication internally is so key. Because, again, people just don't feel like they're part of an organization. When you hear something that big outside, your first thought is, huh, I wasn't important enough for you to tell me that we have a new MD. Yeah. Because somebody in the company obviously knows. knows. But then the information just hasn't filtered down um, to, to everybody else. But when we start to sort of, I guess we're, we're, we're coming towards the end of the show, we've sort of talked about a lot of different things that I think are really key in understanding how to communicate effectively for growth. So I think that we should, um, in looking at everything that we've said so far, what, what else is there when we're thinking about um, effective communication? If we look at not just the communication skills. When you were talking just now, you said, I need to understand my clear, what, is, what are the expectations in my day-to-day? -day? What are the goals? What are the things that I'm supposed to be working to? So you find that even in performance management, even in making sure that people understand what is expected of them, you find a lot of companies, um, particularly the smaller companies, they don't define what your responsibilities are. So, oh, I'm a receptionist. Okay, do you have a job description? Mm. Do you know what you're supposed to say when you're welcoming customers? Do you have your processes documented? All these things form part of um, internal communications. They're there to communicate this is how we do things. This is what your role is. This is what your responsibilities are. This is how we measure um, performance. Where, in your experience, where else have there been gaps when it comes to communication, where you're just like, in fact, onboarding was another very big one. Mm. So many companies also don't have a handbook. They don't have a playbook. So people just come in and depending on the size of the organization, I may be clear that I'm an engineer, yeah. but then I don't know who the product manager is. I don't even know whether one exists. You know, so even that onboarding process is so, so critical. So when we say communication, it's not just like, I'm talking to you, you're talking to me, or I'm sending emails back and forth. But there are certain types of um, documents and things that exist, yeah. right, yeah. to communicate across that business line to say, I need you to be effective. Mm. I need you to know what, what it is that you're doing. So what, what else do you think organizations should have in that sort of type of skill, documents and documentation and things that will actually help the organization to be more effective? Mm, so I think... I've been able to cover um, things in terms of documentation, but I think another key thing, just to digress a little bit, that I feel like some companies are missing out on is giving constructive feedback, which I feel like it's very important, right? Um, you, have some, you have some employees who, who just want to hit the road, 
running, mm. right? They're very aggressive. They're the kind of people who, once they join the company, you can already see the growth. You can already see their impact in the business. But the thing is, they don't get good feedback on mm. their work, right? There is no, <clears throat> oh, well done. You're not telling them how, um, how they're doing amazing, right? Mm -hmm. Sorry. <clears throat> now, in, in, in situations like that, you tend to have um, people who feel like they're doing so much, but the company isn't recognizing their efforts, mm -hmm. right? And those are key things that are very, very important. A small or little, well done, you did great. Yeah, yeah. Goes a long way. And that's another thing that helps the company, right? So when people tend to or start to see that trend, they are forced to want to put in more work. Mm. People want to apply themselves. Absolutely. I know that um, sometimes people feel like, you know what, this is my role. This is the only thing I'm here to do. Mm -hmm. But then there's also room to take on extra work, right? If, if you feel like, oh, there's a place or a part of the job that is lacking, so maybe I can pick up some of it. Mm -hmm. Now, when you see someone who is doing that, you need to recognize them mm. for that. Yeah. They need to know that, oh, yeah, the company is seeing my work and they appreciate yeah. my Yeah, so effort, being able to yeah, communicate. And being able to give them yeah. incentive for that, right? So when you do that, people would, people would want to do more, mm. right? They want mm. to apply themselves more. Mm. And constructive feedback is another form of communication, Yeah. right? Sometimes um, a person might do... Um, do a work that isn't so great, the way, you, the way you would tell that employee, oh, what you did isn't amazing, right? But then there's a way to communicate that mm. as well without being condescending or without making them feel, feel like they did yeah. total, they, they did a total mess. Mm -hmm. I mean, you think they don't know that it messed up. Yeah. They, <laughs> they already know. But the way you call them out, either privately or... Um, publicly within the organization mm. also matters, yeah. right? That's where effective communication comes in as well. Yeah, that's, that's actually that's a, a good one in practice as we wrap up. That's a good one to end on, um, being able to communicate performance, to give feedback, um, and also to, you know, to reward people or acknowledge the hard work that they've done. Um, we got a quick question that came in that says, how can small businesses create a communication structure? I think all the things that we've said fit into that, having a handbook, having a clear onboarding process that's documented, being able to tell their story, um, what you put out externally about your business, whether it's on social media. Understanding the different mediums you communicate out on as well is important because yeah. the way you talk about yourself and present yourself on social media um, will be different from the way you present yourself maybe in a company statement or annual statement, right? So yeah. again, matching the tone of your communication to... Um, the medium that you're communicating on, and then having those clear, um, what will I call it now, clear guidelines for how people should communicate. Do people understand your tone of voice as an organization? When people see your communication or see something from your brand, do they immediately know it's you? It's you, yeah. Does that sound like your organization? Yeah, yeah, So sure. very, very important that mm. when we're doing that, also making sure that people... Um, Open channels of communication. I think that's, that's probably where we will end on. To say, people also knowing that um, a lot of companies say, oh, we have um, open door policies these days, you know, from the days of we're all working uh, in an open plan office as opposed to... to, to um, people having, like their, people having their offices, offices and things yeah. like that and being enclosed away from each other. So all of those things are done to essentially create that camaraderie, build um, relationships, all with the goal to effectively grow the business. Yeah. So also in that aspect of making sure that people understand what your policies are around communication. Again, another thing that we have seen, companies know what to put on social media and what people who are known representatives. So if you know that I work for a certain company, then I also need to be careful what I'm putting what on social media yeah. because people can also take what I've said or done and that can affect the image of, um, of our company. So I think that those things, every, a lot of every, or what we've said today really applies to businesses. And if they can put all those things together, then they essentially have built an effective um, communication structure. They've taken in, into account 
all the different elements um, that we have. So it's been, um, for me, interesting conversation. It's just two of us today <laughs> carrying, carrying the show as we close out. Um, but we hope that you, you know, picked up a thing or two from the conversation and um, that we have some good tips for you to be able to put in play uh, for your businesses. If you want any more than that, then we're going to have to charge you. <laughs> we'll charge you. <laughs> we'll charge you. <laughs> Consultancy fee. Or I would, you know, do you up a nice invoice and send to you. And we, <laughs> and we can charge you for it. But yeah, it's been great spending the evening with you, Jennifer. Yeah, so okay. um, look forward to, to doing it again next week. <laughs> so before we go, do ensure that you follow us on Instagram at Wayshow Africa. You can interact with us further, drop a comment. And most importantly, follow all our social media engagements. And remember to like, share, comment, and invite your friends and family to watch us and follow us. Don't enjoy ways alone. If you missed today's quote, here it is again. Nothing in life is more important than the ability to communicate effectively. We certainly hope that we've communicated effectively in the course of the show today. And we look forward to seeing you again on Monday at 8 p.m. as we bring another great conversation to your screen. Have a good evening.